Watch the whole thing. That last clip was kind of impressive, but I've seen enough. These hurt to watch. One man is to blame for this tomfoolery. One player by the name of Steph Curry completely changed the style of basketball. And by the end of the video, you're gonna know what caused the league to turn into a three-point barrage, how the NBA exploded with offense, and everything else that happened that shaped the landscape of the modern NBA. The NBA has been around for almost a century, and the sport of basketball has been around for even longer than that. Throughout this wide time frame, we've seen the game go through countless changes. I believe from the day the NBA was founded to the current day, there have been six unique eras of the game. These six eras capture the different changes of players, teams, playstyles, strategies, and culture. And in today's video, we're going to look at what I like to call the offensive explosion, which spans from the years 2015 to the present day. In this time frame, I'm sure many of you are keenly aware of, this era represents the emergence of the three-point dominated league. And of course, this revolution was led by none other than Steph Curry. 2015 marks the shift of an era, because 2015 was when the Splash Brother Warriors really started to take control of the league. In 2015, the Warriors won their first of many NBA championships during this time frame. Steph Curry won his first MVP. But what was really special special about this title was how the Warriors won it. The Warriors in 2015 showed the league that you could win a championship with your best player being a three-point shooter, and they did it again and again and one more time. Never in NBA history have we seen a championship won by your shooter leading the team. Now some of you may like to say Larry Bird did it first, but he really wasn't a primary three-point shooter. During Larry Bird's career in the playoffs, he only shot about 1.5 threes per game, while Steph Curry was shooting about 10.6 threes a game. Steph Curry was the very first shooter to lead his team to a title. He pioneered the perimeter-dominated league which we have today. Because of the monumental effects of the Splash Brother Warriors had on the league, pretty much every team in the league attempted to copy this playstyle. I mean, if it got them four rings, it wouldn't hurt us, right? We have evidence that the Warriors influenced the whole league. Right here, this graph shows the three point attempt rate of the league average and the three point attempt rate of the Golden State Warriors with Steph Curry. The Warriors are yellow and the NBA is orange. The Warriors started at 2010 because that's when Curry was drafted. As we can see by around 2014 and 2015, the Warriors significantly separated themselves with their absurdly high level of threes taken. Because the Warriors were winning championships, proving this model of basketball actually worked, the rest of the league adapted. As we can see, there's a pretty linear progression of the average three-point attempt rate of the league throughout the late 10s and early 20s. During the 2020 season right here, both Curry and Clay were injured for the majority of the season, so this obviously throws off their numbers. But they came back stronger than ever because in 2021 to the present day, the Warriors have been blowing up the three-point attempt. The Warriors in 2023 are shooting a three-pointer about 48% of the time. That's almost half your shots just coming from threes. That's ridiculous. Even about five to ten years ago, that would have simply been unheard of. It would have just been stupid. Anyways, I think this chart pretty clearly shows how the success of the Warriors directly influences the landscape of the league. Eventually, in 2021, Steph Curry broke the three-point record, which was originally held by Ray Allen. What took one of the greatest shooters of all time a whole 18-year career to achieve. 
Curry overcame it in about a decade. It just shows how much three-point shooting has evolved over the last 10 to 20 years. One of Steph Curry and the Warriors' greatest rivalries of the time that you are all most likely aware of are the LeBron James-led Cavaliers. These teams played each other four times in the finals, four straight years from 2015 to 2018. And for the most part, the Warriors dominated these series, winning in 2015, 17, and 18. But not 2016 though. 2016 was a special year. 2016 was the year that we saw LeBron James and the Cavs come back 3-1 to in the finals. A feat that we've never seen any other team do in NBA history. Another one of the Warriors arch rivals during this time was the Houston Rockets. And this rivalry was even more lopsided than the Cavs. The Houston Rockets played against the Warriors during four different postseasons. 2015, 2016, 2018, and 2019. And the Warriors won all four times. Times. But the Rockets did more than just get embarrassed by Steph Curry in the 2010s. The Rockets were also a huge influence for the three-point shooting landscape of the NBA. The Rockets were actually miles ahead of the whole league in this department. The James Harden-led Rockets were first place in three-point attempt rate for seven straight seasons, and they were miles ahead of even the next closest team. Their isolation offense with James Harden and shooters surrounding him was a big influence for the analytical era of shot attempts we're in today. There's one thing we can't forget about during the turn of the decade though. That's the pandemic which kind of stopped basketball for a few months. But eventually the NBA bubble was created because of this. And the LA Lakers led by LeBron James and Anthony Davis dominated during this unique time. Like I mentioned before, the modern NBA has really been an offensive explosion. We've seen drastic changes to the pace and style of play just recently. Right here, we have a chart of the pace of play, which starts all the way in 1951 and ends in 2023. The league's pace of play has fluctuated a lot over its history. During the 1950s and 60s, the league's possession count was off the wall, averaging in the 120s and 110s. During the 90s and 2000s, the league's possession count was at its lowest point in history, around the low 90s. But in the late 2010s and early 20s, we've seen a drastic change in the pace of play. The league's pace is increasing by the year now. Why does this even matter, you ask? Well, I didn't call this time the offensive explosion for nothing. Increasing three-pointers along with the increase in pace of play is the perfect formula for super high-scoring offensive-dominated games. In 2004, the average score for a team was 93.4 points. In 2023, the average score for a team jumped up to 114.7 points. That's more than a 20-point increase. And not only team scoring was affected by this, but also individual scoring. 20 points a game. Back even just a few years ago or so, this milestone felt like a hallmark for a great scorer in the league. Until just recently, a 20 point a game scorer was someone who you built your team around. Right here, this shows the amount of 20 point game or more scorers in the league from 2000 to 2023. During the 2000s, this number hovered around the 15 to 25 range, and it dropped as low as just 9 20 plus point scorers in 2013. But in 2023, there was a whopping 43 20 plus point scorers in the league. 20 points a game has now become the baseline for a good player, where just a few years ago, it was seen as the ideal scorer. In 2004, Bucks shooting guard Michael Redd averaged a respectable 21.7 points a game. This put him at 10th in scoring in the NBA, and even gave him an all-star appearance. Do you know how many points Michael Redd would have averaged in today's game? If you adjust the pacing to the modern game, Michael Redd would be averaging about 23.7 points a game. And this doesn't even factor in three-pointers. Michael Redd was a three-point sniper. Michael Redd that season attempted 4.4 threes a game. If Michael Redd was playing today, being the number one option on the Bucks, he would easily be putting up eight to nine threes a game. Saying he would average close to 27 or 28 isn't crazy to say. Let's do this the opposite way now. In 2023, Jordan Poole averaged 20.4 points a game. Also not bad. While numbers like these put Michael Redd in the top 10 scoring list, Poole doesn't even crack the top 30. Last season, he finished 38th place in scoring. If Jordan Poole played during Michael Redd's day, so 2004, Jordan Poole would be averaging only 18 points a game. Do you see how this inflates the numbers? The increased pace of play causes scoring to ramp up like crazy. But this isn't the only reason. An increased importance on transition offense, players naturally getting better at shooting, but the most important reason why I believe are rule changes that benefit offense and the way that refs officiate the game now. 
One of the biggest rule changes that helped offense was removing the hand check in 2004. Other changes like the defensive three second rule and clear path fouls also helped, but more importantly, the officiating of games severely influenced the outcome of them. And in our case, the refs want to see an offensive barrage. Right here we have Jordan Poole doing a series of moves that today wouldn't really get a second glance. Let's look at that again one more time. If a player ever did any of these moves 20 years ago, I think the ref would have a heart attack on the spot. Just call everything in the rule book on him at that point. Or what about the spin move from Giannis? Perfectly legal today. But if Giannis did this 20 years ago, the refs would have told him, don't forget your luggage for the travel to Greece and back. These are just a few examples of how superstars in today's game bend the rules of traveling, carrying, and double dribbling. Speaking of Giannis, there's one more thing that really makes this time special. During some of the most recent years of the league, I'm talking less than 5 years ago, we've seen the revival of strong and dominant big men. I mean the last 5 MVPs won have all came from power forwards or centers, but there's a catch. These bigs aren't back to the basket players like all the previous generations were. These bigs have something else different about them. They weren't just assigned to sit under the basket, instead they were given more freedom. The modern NBA let them show off their skills. Big men were all of a sudden allowed to dribble, pass, and shoot like a guard, while still having the physical attributes of a traditional center. In today's game, we've seen flexible and skilled big men crowd the NBA. Let's take a look at some of them. Giannis Antetokounmpo, who has the speed, agility, and jumping ability of a wing, but has the physical build and size of a center. Your big man isn't supposed to be a nightmare in transition like Giannis is. Another example is Joel Embiid, who is pretty much like a Hakeem Olajuwon and Shaq combo, but who can shoot and dribble the ball. Like, you shouldn't be able to do this at 7 foot and almost 300 pounds. And we can't forget about Nikola Jokic. I think Jokic really defines the modern day big man. I mean, what can't this man do on the basketball court? He can shoot the most ridiculous shots and somehow still make them fall. He can handle the ball on a string. He's literally the best passer in the whole NBA. Sure, he may not be the most athletic guy, but it doesn't matter. As soon as he puts his back to his defender, you can pretty much just chalk up the points. It's big men who are like these that are the future of the league. You know who else checks a lot of these boxes? To the hoop, lays it up, no, the foul, no, Wembenyama with the point back! That's right, although you guys are probably as sick as I am of hearing the name Victor Wembenyama, if he can live up to the expectations, he is the future of the NBA and centers in general. Like we talked about before, Wemby can almost do anything on the floor he pleases. Handle the rock? Check. Shoot the outside ball well? Check. Pass the ball well? Check and he can still do what traditional centers have always done, like scoring in the paint, grabbing boards, and blocking shots. This is really the future for big men and the league in general. The league will be dominated by the seven foot demigods that can literally do anything on the court. I think we're starting to see a shift from a guard dominated league back to a big man dominated league. If you enjoyed this video, I would highly recommend you go watch this series of videos from the start where we talk about how the NBA evolved over time and what led up to the current game we're in today.